Attorney General Jeff Sessions is on the Hill today testing, uh, testifying before the House Judiciary Committee to discuss, among other things, alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Responding to questioning, Sessions denied he lied under oath in October when he stated he did not remember contacts between so-called Russians and members of the Trump campaign. Court records now show Sessions le led, in fact, a March 2016 meeting with campaign aide George Papadopoulos who reportedly proposed setting up a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, a meeting which never happened. Speaking today, Sessions says he now recalls that conversation. I do now recall that the March 2016 meeting at the Trump Hotel that Mr. Papadopoulos attended, but I have no clear recollection of the details of what he said at that meeting. So, is that enough to quell suspicions of guilt? Let's discuss with political commentator Steve Malsberg and former Florida State Democratic Party Chair Mitch Caesar. Welcome, gentlemen. Steve, let's go to you first. Obviously, this Papadopoulos character was a bit misguided. For example, he suggested he could set up this meeting through a contact he had with Putin's niece, a niece which doesn't even exist. But still, doesn't the fact Sessions directly contradicted uh, or was contradicted by these court documents spell some sort of trouble. No, not at all. Um, he uh, corrected the record, which many, many people do. He said today that he just simply didn't remember. The press reports charred his memory, and he recalls uh, saying no to any such meeting. Then there was Carter Page, who also uh, said that he had mentioned something to Sessions. Uh, and Sessions will take him at his word, he said today, but he doesn't recall it. He said it's possible, but if it happened, he was walking out the door and never even responded to whatever Carter Page told him. I mean, Sessions pointed out that there were days when he was uh, running around while still an active U.S. senator and serving on the campaign to sometimes six, seven cities in one day. He said, you expect me to remember everything and everybody who said anything to me at any time? And by the way... Yeah, I, I, again, so that, that speaks, there's no perjury here. Nobody's even suggesting perjury except some of the radical leftist Democrats on that committee. So I think he acquitted himself mm. quite well today. Mitch, I want to let you respond to that. Uh, is that a good enough answer for you that he didn't remember and these news reports jogged his memory? He has a very unusual phrasing here, uh, the, the Attorney General does. Specifically, he has the malady called AG amnesia. Uh, he seems to not remember anything, and now he remembers a few things. I mean, it's like a bad comedy bit. He says, I don't remember the meeting. If I did remember the meeting, I don't remember what was said. But if I did remember what was said, I would have told everybody I was against it. I could just see the Saturday Night Live skit on Saturday coming. Specifically, since his last discussion, you've had uh, somebody indicted and pled guilty to lying to the FBI. That's Papadopoulos. Uh, you remember the photo that shows Session, uh, just two people away from Papadopoulos at a national security meeting uh, during the campaign with then uh, candidate Trump. Uh, it doesn't wash. He only remembers when he's forced to remember. I don't think uh, that uh, uh, he's being truthful and being kind. And I would certainly not use the term he was acquitted well. Well, the Trump administration was not the only topic of discussion today. Members of Congress were also curious as to whether or not Sessions would appoint a special counsel to investigate the Clinton Foundation to see whether payments to the group impacted the Obama-era decision to sell uranium in the United States to a Russian company while Clinton was Secretary of State. Let's take a listen. What's it going to take, if all that, not to mention the dossier information, what's it going to take to actually get a special counsel? It will take a factual basis that meets the standards of the appointment of a special and is counsel. That, I would say it looks like is not enough basis to appoint a special counsel. No factual basis there. Good news for the Democrats. Eh, Mitch? Well, I think it's good news that, and I have to applaud the Attorney General in this case, you know, credit where it's due, that he was honest. Of course, I'm sure he did not ingratiate himself with his boss once again, uh, President Trump. You know, two strikes and he may be out and be going back to Alabama because of the Moore problem. Listen, 16 people on this committee it involved multiple, multiple different agencies just talking about some uranium production being shifted slightly. And very specifically, I think the Secretary of State had one designee on that committee. There is 
nothing there. This is really an example. And again, I applaud the attorney general for being pretty straightforward and honest. This is another example of the shiny object theory we've come to see for the last year or two. If you don't like something that's going on over here, create a false shiny object over there. I think he was being very honest and was the attorney general. What do you think of that? Well, did, what do you he, think of that, Steve? Well, uh, gaining some praise from the Democrats there uh, this uh, this morning. Well, he didn't. I don't. I don't. I, I hope we're not misrepresenting what the Attorney General said. I was disappointed, and I applaud Jim Jordan, who was fantastic. But he didn't say there will not be a special counsel. Uh, as a matter of fact, the letter that he sent uh, to the committee yesterday, in answer to their letter from three weeks ago or three months ago, says that they're investigating whether or not there should be a special a special counsel. It's far from over. And to say that this is a shiny object and there's nothing there, we have learned uh, that uh, the FBI knew of bribery and all kinds of uh, un untoward uh, occurrences and didn't tell Congress or anybody else while it was taking place and Mueller was the head of the FBI and Obama was president and the uranium was being transferred and Hillary's husband was getting money to speak. I mean, this is huge and if there's a special counsel, um, it's going to be devastating for the Clintons especially and the Democrats overall. I want to segue. If, 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 Go if ahead. I, if, if I might, let me. If I might, let me just add that this this presidency has been great on conspiracies. If we're going to take it to that far extent, which that, a lot of that uh, material has not been uh, brought to the fore, really proven in any way, we might as well talk about Watergate. We might as well talk about Travelgate. We might as well talk about who killed the Easter Bunny. It's all part of the same type of wild right, conspiracy right. And the dossier, foundation. And the dossier that the Clintons and the DNC financed. Uh, that's nothing. Either. Either. I mean, it's precious for a Democrat to sit here and talk about uh, investigations and, and, and just, you know, uh, talking about um, conspiracy theories. Wow. That's and what the it's, it's certainly true that the Trump, the Trump campaign is not the only group to raise questions about uh, some of the uh, uh, favors or, or uh, donations made at the Clinton Foundation. That's been something widely reported in, in media as well. For example, Business Insider reported in depthly on some of that. But I want to move on and get each of your takes on a recent re recent report in the Atlantic showing WikiLeaks reaching out to Donald Trump Jr. over Twitter multiple times during the campaign. In direct messages obtained by the publication The Atlantic, uh, the WikiLeaks account writes to Don Jr. "Quote: Hey Don, we have an unusual idea." leak us one or more of your father's tax returns. If we publish them, it will dramatically improve the perception of our impartiality. Saying at a later date, it would be real easy and helpful for your dad to suggest that Australia appoint Assange to ambassador to Washington, D.C. I want to go to you first, Steve. While this doesn't necessarily prove uh, collusion, and it's true these messages were published very selectively, doesn't this at least look like WikiLeaks was seeking attention and favors from the Trump campaign? Yeah, Donald, they reached out to him many, many, many times, and he responded twice in a very innocuous fashion. Uh, and by the way, this wasn't given to, I don't, I don't know who, Jeff Sessions talked about the fact that there are 27 ongoing leak investigations, leaks that he says have become epidemic and must stop. This was closed door testimony to Congress that Donald Jr. gave to the Congressional Committee, and it was illegally leaked to uh, the, the media. That's how we're now talking about it. So that has to be pointed out. Donald Trump Jr., who wasn't part of the campaign, look at his responses. Three responses, two responses, nothing. There's nothing here. This is a joke. Uh, Mitch, I'll give you the last word. Uh, what do you think about this? Let me remind everybody that just because something's leaked, which is wrong, that doesn't mean the material may not be true. Specifically, uh, as said, uh, Donald Trump Jr. cooperated. Uh, when he was contacted, he uh, obviously contacted many, many people in the Trump administration immediately. Uh, they had asked him to do different things. Some tweeting came out of the president uh, shortly thereafter. So it does kind of look like there may be a direct line. And let me remind everybody about that famous meeting at Trump Tower of the highest levels, which is Donald Trump Jr. Jr., uh, specifically uh, Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort, who was the head of the campaign, meeting with a Russian lawyer. So I do think there was connections. I don't know, and I'm not here to say that Trump Jr. did anything wrong or not, but it certainly plays to the narrative that there was continued contact at many levels all the way through. And uh, Donald Trump Jr. did publish the entirety of his exchanges with WikiLeaks on Twitter. Viewers can go there and decide for themselves what exactly was going on. Conservative commentator Steve Mal in New York and Mitch Caesar, former Florida State Democratic Party chair, joining us from Miami. Thank you both.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy, the plot thickens. As the royal family would say. I just want to know who's those next four names that Robert Mueller is going to unleash to be indicted. I can't wait. I'm right now, I'm rubbing my hands like Birdman. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section. Subscribe, share, click your notifications so when new videos are uploaded, you'll get them. Also, you can donate to my PayPal account. Uh, so, therefore, your donations are greatly appreciated. With that said, I leave you peace and love, love, truth, peace, freedom, and always justice. No more talk. I'm done.